Hi everyone, here are your section 9.2 notes. We're going to be getting into the quadratic formula. Uh, I think we're only going to get through the first part of it today, and when we come back from next rotation, we'll cover the rest of 9.2. So right now we're just going to focus on just the quadratic formula. We'll get the discriminant at a later date. So do you guys remember your quadratic formula? Your quadratic formula is x equals negative b plus or minus radical b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. It is important that you have that memorized, though I guess technically you don't need to have it memorized since you can use your notes for your assessments. Um, but there it is in case you don't have it. Write it down and if you don't want to memorize it, I guess. So we, where does the quadratic formula come from? Well, your quadratic formula comes from completing the square. So you just watch this, soak this in. So if you had something like ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero, and you need it to complete the square on that. Well, remember, we can't have a number other than one in our leading coefficient. So if I divide everything by a, then I'm left with x squared plus bax is, uh, and then I'll move my C over, equals negative C over A, right? And then what do we do? We take this B and we divide it by two. So B over A divided by two is just B over two A. And then we square that and add that to both sides. So that'd be B squared all over two squared, which is four A squared. And then I would have to add that over here, B squared over four A squared. This factors to, x plus, remember my b divided by 2, so b over 2a squared is equal to negative c. So if I get a common denominator here of 4 and a squared, I would need a 4 and another a. So what does that become? That becomes negative 4ac plus b squared all over 4a squared which can I just rewrite that as b squared minus 4ac? Huh, that's looking a bit familiar. Okay, so now we have x plus b over 2a squared, square rooting, square rooting, square rooting. I'm running out of space, so I'll come back up here. All right, so now we end up with x plus b over 2a is equal to plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over. When I square that denominator, I get 2a. Move that b 2a over. So e x equals negative b over 2a plus or minus radical b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And then couldn't I just bring that over into one fraction? I could. 2a b squared plus or minus, or sorry, negative b, not b squared negative b plus or minus the radical b squared minus 4ac. There it is, quadratic formula. So your quadratic formula is just the standard form of a quadratic equation, complete it square on it, right? Pretty cool. So how do we use the quadratic formula? Well, when we have a quadratic equation, the coefficient in front of your x is your a, the coefficient, or your x squared is your a, the coefficient in front of your x is b, and then your constant is c. So x equals the negative of my b would be a positive 5 plus or minus the square root b squared would be 25 minus 4 times my a, which is 6, times my c, which is negative 4, all over 2 times my a, which is 12. Then what I would do is I would get out my calculator and I would put this number without the square root sign in. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So let me get my calculator going here. Okay, so I had my negative b, so it was 25 minus 4 times my a, which was 6, 6, not 3, times my c, which is negative 4, times negative 4, and I get my radicand to be 121. Why is that nice? Well, 121 is a perfect square, right? So I end up getting 5 plus or minus the square root of 121 all over 12. 121 is 11 when you square root it over 12. So now I'm going to do 5 minus 11 divided by 12. And then I'm going to do 5 plus 11 divided by 12. Well, 5 minus 11 is negative 6 over 12, which is negative 1 half. 
5 plus 11 is 16 over 12, which that would reduce to taking out 4, so 4 thirds. So because my answers are rational, that meant that this was factorable. So we could have factored that. So I'm going to write negative 1 half because that's my smallest, comma, 4 thirds. And there would be your final answer. Okay, next one. Here we have 4x squared is equal to 8x minus 1. In order to be able to do the quadratic formula, you need to move everything over to the same side. Since my x squared is already positive, I'm going to shift everything to the left. My a is 4, my b is negative 8, my c is positive 1. So x is equal to negative of my b, which would be 8, plus or minus b squared, which is 64, minus 4 times my a, which happens to be 4 also, times my c, which is 1, all over 2 times my a, which is 8. This one I can probably do in my head. 4 times 4 times 1 is 16, so 64 minus 16. What does that get us? 48, so not a perfect square. So 8 plus or minus the square root of 48 all over 8, which means this one would not have been factorable, right? So let's go ahead and do some simplifying. 8 over 8 plus or minus root 48 over 8. 8 over 8 is 1 plus or minus, what perfect square goes into 48? 16 times three, I think would be our largest. So four square roots of three all over eight. So how can I reduce that fraction? If I ignore this, four over eight would reduce to one half. So then I get, oops, yeah, go, come back. Then I get one plus or minus root three over two. So one minus root three over two, 1 plus root 3 over 2 would be my two answers. Ooh, fractions. Fractions are not terrible, guys. p squared plus, this is 1 third p minus 1 sixth is equal to 0 if I rewrite that. So my a is 1, my b is 1 third, my c is negative 1 over 6. So let's plug it in. x is equal to negative of my b, so negative 1 third. Plus or minus, one-third squared is one-ninth, minus four times one times negative one-sixth, all over two times my a, which is two. All right, let's just let a calculator do it for us. How does that sound? So I'm going to get my calculator out. And what are we doing? Let me forget what my numbers were. It was one-ninth, so one divide nine. Minus 4 times 1 times negative 1 divide 6. I'm going to hit enter, and then I'm going to convert it back to a fraction. So I get 5 over 6 as my discriminant, right? My radicand, my number underneath. So negative 1 third plus or minus the square root of 5 over 6 all over 2. Whew, how do we deal with that one? Well, let's just first focus on the numerator. Uh, or actually, let's split it. Let's do our negative one-third divided by two. Well, that just becomes negative one over six, plus or minus. Now, root five over root six, I do need to rationalize that. So that becomes root 30 over six. And when I divide that by two, I get root 30 over 12. So my final answer is negative one over six minus root 30 over 12 and 1 over 6 plus root 30, I ran out of space, over 12. That's a 30, that looks really bad. Okay, so fractions are not that terrible. You can handle it. All right, let's do two more. Whoop, went all the way back. To, okay, so, oops, nope, we just did that one. So let's go ahead and try this one on our own. Go ahead and pause. Welcome back, let's go through it, see how you did. So two x squared minus 14 x plus 19 is equal to zero. X is equal to 14 plus or minus 14 squared is 196 minus four times a times c all over two a, which is four. So then I would get my calculator out. And I would do, 
So what are we doing? Negative 14 squared. If you're putting the whole negative 14 squared in your calculator, please make sure you put parentheses around it. Minus 4 times the A times the C gets us 44 as my radicand. So 14 plus or minus the square root of 44 all over 4. Split it up, 14 over 4 plus or minus 44, well that's 4 and 11, so 2 square roots of 11 over 4. Reduced as you can, so my first fraction I can take out a 2, so 7 halves. And my second fraction, again remember to ignore your radical, 2 over 4 reduces to 1 half, so that would be root 11 over 2. So I get 7 halves minus root 11 over 2, 7 halves plus root 11 over 2. And that would be your final answer. All right, let's do one more, a bit more challenging. So here we have a binomial times a binomial is equal to a constant. So in order to be able to use the quadratic formula on this, I need to FOIL and multiply out those two sets of parentheses. Oops, come back. So when I multiply, double distribute, I get 9x squared minus 9x plus 3x minus 3. Combining like terms, 9x squared minus 6x minus 3 is equal to negative 8. Move your negative 8 over by adding it. So then I get 9x squared minus 6x plus 5 is equal to 0. Quadratic formula, here we come. x equals negative my b, so positive 6 plus or minus the square root of my b squared, which is 36, minus 4 times a times c. If you just square your b right away and make sure that that's positive, then you'll not run into the habit of relying on your calculator to do it and forgetting to put a parenthesis around a negative. So just kind of do it in your head and put it in there. 2 times my a is 18. So now I'm going to get my calculator out. Oh goodness, I forget what it was. What was it? 36, 4, 9, 5. Okay, so 36 minus 4 times 9 times 5. That gets me an answer of negative 144, which isn't terrible because that is a perfect square, but it is a negative. So we have x is equal to 6 plus or minus the square root of negative 144 all over 18. Well, that just goes to 6 plus or minus the square root of 144 is 12 pop the i out with it, over 18. All right, so 6 eighteenths plus or minus 12 i eighteenths, so reduce. That would go to 1 third. I can take out 6, so 2 thirds. So 1 third minus 2 i thirds. 1 third plus 2 i thirds would be your final answer. Okay, and we're going to stop there for the notes. So we're just going to focus just on the quadratic formula for now. Okay, bye everyone.